Hey, what's up, guys? It's Andrew from HTC One Soft Modern, and today I'm going to be showing you how to turn your HTC One into the ultimate gaming device with RetroArch. RetroArch is pretty much um, an all-in-one emulator. It has a bunch of them, like it has an SNES, Nintendo 64, PlayStation One, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, all those kind of different emulators, all in one. So you don't have to download a bunch of different apps to get the same experience. So um, all the ROMs you can either find by Googling, or if you have, already have some on your computer, just transfer them over to your phone. And then after that, you go ahead and download RetroArch. RetroArch is in the Play Store, so you don't have to worry about downloading an APK from a site and downloading it. It'll be right there and be updated automatically if you have it set up that way. So after you have it downloaded, you can go ahead and open it up. When you first open up RetroArch, you'll see this main screen. And um, pretty much you can check out your settings. Mostly the first thing you want to set up is whatever controller layout you want to have show up by default. Now because I'm going to be running mostly uh, Game Boy games, I'm going to set my input um, down on overlay, the input overlay. I'm going to set that to the Game Boy one by default because that's what I'm usually going to be using. So under the directory, hit Gamepads, GBA, and then still at the GBA.CFE, and that'll make it so that by default, whenever you open up ROM, it'll open up that specific overlay for the uh, for the game. Other than that, you could always change that from within the ROM itself. So let's go ahead and start one up. Okay, so under my history, I've already played a few games. Just open up Fire Red. Now when you open it up, you could always you could automatically see now that I have the controllers right here, the A and B right there, and then the triggers up top. They work fine. Go ahead and start a new game if you wanted to. Just hit the start button at the bottom. And if you want to play it in portrait mode, you can as well. Just make sure to hit the rotation button on top to bring the controllers so that they're not all um, skewed out of place. Alright, now if you ever wanted to just change the, um, the controller layout or switch to a different ROM, while you're playing one, you can go ahead and hit the retro arc icon on the top, go down to the settings, go down to overlay options, and then you can change the preset, and then you can just search for the one that you want. So if I want to switch the gamepad to maybe the N64 one, I'll go ahead and hit that one, and then now I have an N64 layout instead of playing with the regular Game Boy Advance version of it. You could also change the plus sign to change it to the D-pad instead of the analog stick. But after you have that, you can just press B to get out. You could also change the game. So let's say I wanted to change it to Street Fighter. So go ahead and load that one up. And it'll load up into that one as well. Um, those, that's pretty much it as, long, as far as playing ROMs. There are other settings that you could change up from within it. Like you could change the auto save. So pretty much what RetroArch does is that by default, it'll, it'll create an automatic save state when you exit a game. So you don't have to worry about finding a save point from within it. So all you have to do is auto save state, have that enabled, and then you can have it automatically load anytime you open up that specific ROM. So you don't have to worry about that. The other um, other settings are for audio. I don't like to have it enabled because you don't, because I'm playing in between classes or something. So I don't want to have that going off. Um, input is the same thing. You could also have the option to add the um, iCade remote or any other kind of remotes you have on your, like for any other system, as long as you have the OTG cable for it. Other than that, you speak to video, you could force the aspect ratio. I have mine set to auto or um, could also set it to full screen, but you don't have to worry about that. The only thing you do have to um, take into consideration is that it will um, stretch the, the actual gameplay, so it may look different than what it originally looked like. You could also set to where you, you have your ROM directory. Um, that just pretty much has it uh, so that whenever you select to load a ROM, it'll automatically go to that folder on your SD card instead of just going giving you the generic parent folder. Same thing goes for save files and save states. The system option is for BIOS files that you'll need for um, specific emulators that require a BIOS file in order to run. I know the PlayStation 1 requires that, and I think the N64 one does as well. Another thing to note about the DS emulator is that currently RetroArch does not have a native overlay for that controller, so you are going to need to... Um, Use a different one when you are playing DS games. I just go ahead and use um, another emulator for that one because it's still a little bit buggy on RetroArch. 
Um, other than that, that's pretty much it. Uh, the ROMs, I mean, granted, like any other emulator, they can get a little bit laggy at times, but other than that, they work perfectly fine. I hope that you helped you guys out. Be sure to check out the full tutorial in the description. And like always, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Have a good one, guys.